Good day, everyone. I hope this video finds you in good health. Sincerely. Um, in this video, I will show and discuss the process it took to create an air splitter housing and splitter for my top mount intercooler. But before we get into that, um, I just want to say if you or someone you know is in the process of building a project car or has a completed project, I would like to hear it in the comments. Um, and if you're interested in having your project in the episode, just shoot me a message. Or you can contact me on Instagram at Rocking Uploads. I'll put a link in the description. Alright, so the air splitter. I decided to build my own air splitter for several reasons. Um, first, I have an aftermarket hood and intercooler. My hood scoop and intercooler are larger than any of the OEM units. So none of the OEM units would optimize the parts that I have. Second, the aftermarket splitters I found were made for OEM use. This means I would probably have to cut up and drill them to make them fit. Which leads to my third reason. Why would I spend money on something that doesn't fit? With this particular part, it would take a lot of modifications for me to get it to work. Now sometimes you can buy a part that doesn't fit and modify it to your needs. In this case, the amount of work that would be needed is very similar to just building it. Which then leads me to say, I have time, materials, and a purpose. If there's an opportunity for me to learn and experience a new skill when it comes to cars, I will most likely take that opportunity, and I encourage you to do the same. So first, here's the gist of materials I use to either design or build a splitter. I have a sheet of galvanized steel, um, step drill bits with a center punch, the punch is a must, foam board, scissors, metal shears, a rivet tool, and a hand seamer. You will need a means of measuring, marking, and fastening the parts. Um, I'll address those things throughout the video. Uh, most of the time spent on the project was measuring and planning. It may not seem like a complicated piece, but considering the material I'm using and the fact that it must fit in a relatively small space, precision and accuracy are very important. The first thing I did was measure the opening in the hood and intercooler. The intercooler is a rectangle, so that's easy. But the underside of the hood scope is not. So I measured my maximum rectangular dimensions of the underside of the hood and marked and cut the foam board. I then placed the foam board on the hood so then I can mark and trim the foam until it fit the area. After that, I used the mounting bolts as a reference to measure where the scoop opening should be located on the template. With the opening located, I then cut out the rectangle that matches the opening in the hood. So now at this point, I have a template that shows me the size of the housing and where the opening should be for the splitter. Now here is where you must pay attention. The intercooler and splitter housing must line up properly. The intercooler is not centered to the vehicle, meaning the center of the hood lines up with the center of the vehicle. The intercooler does not. It's offset to the left, which in the US that means that's the driver's side. So you cannot just cut out an intercooler sized rectangle centered on the housing. If you did, the intercooler would not be sealed properly once everything is put together. There are a couple of reference points and measurements that you can use to locate the intercooler offset on the template. And here's what I did. With the template mounted to the hood, I took a string and hung it from one hand to the hood. Then I moved it left and right until it lined up with the end of the intercooler. Then I marked the template. You can do this with a level and straight edge if you want to. Now looking at this picture, you can see that the template has marks on the left and right side, meaning the opening in the hood is larger than the intercooler. I will note that the intercooler is wider than the scoop opening. Now I want to take advantage of my largest scoop and intercooler. My goal is to get as much air as possible to the intercooler without losing the velocity of the air coming in. So I base my opening for the air splitter on the length of the intercooler, but the width of the opening in the hood. This way, fresh air will get to the full length of the intercooler with minimum loss of air velocity. So at this point, the template tells me the size of the housing, my mounting locations, and the size and location for the scoop opening 
and the intercooler. So I can then build my main housing and design and build the splitter. This is where I start to figure out how I can manipulate the sheet metal to make the parts. Now realistically, this part can be designed in CAD and made with a single piece of aluminum with an industrial strength, strength press. And it can do it in less than a second. But since that's not my current situation, I had to do it the old fashioned way. Pencil and paper, folks. So I drew out different ways to cut and bend the metal so I could find the best method that fits my skill set and the tools that I have available. I also had to draw the dimensions and angles for the splitter. So after choosing a method, um, I did experiment with my sheet metal. It's a lot of work and my supply is limited. So I used a regular piece of paper to make sure my theoretical bends and my angles would work in the real world. I will note that I doubled the thickness of all the parts to increase the part rigidity. So some parts were mirrored so I can fold them and some parts were layered. Even the layer parts have folded sections to add rigidity. As you get more familiar with sheet metal, um, you'll learn how to manipulate it. I'm still a noob, so we're all pretty much on the same level. So now it's time to cut. Or is it? No, it's not. Um, now I must transfer all my measurements to the sheet metal from template A, including the bolt hole locations. Then I marked where the rubber gaskets will mount and I just happen to have two OEM uh, splitter gaskets, so I will repurpose them. I wouldn't suggest cutting any of the metal until after you've marked every detail possible and you drill all your holes. Um, this part has holes that could be hard to drill once it's in final shape, so I drilled all the holes before I even started bending. Once the holes were drilled, I used a hand seamer, shears, and a hammer to shape the metal. My markings may be confusing to you, but I know what they meant. I say that because if you want to make something like this, make sure you have a system that works for you. Everybody has their own little thing that, you know, they can appreciate. So here's the housing after cutting and shaping. The main housing is layered, so there's a top piece and a separate bottom. The splitter section will be sandwiched between the layers. For the splitter height, I measured from the inside of the hood opening to the center of the hood scoop inlet. This should split the air around the halfway mark. I know that when I install it, it will not be perfectly 50-50. And for my application, that's okay. Now if this was a full-blown race car, I would measure airflow and velocity between the front, back, and side to side. And most likely make the splitter adjustable so I can adjust the angle of attack and the height. But my car is not a race car. But speaking of measuring, I did want to get a baseline of my intake temps before installing the splitter and then measure those intake temps after just to see if the juice was worth the squeeze. But I'll have to do that another time as I'm only going out for essentials because of the whole coronavirus thing. So for now, I have to place my faith in physics and fluid dynamics. Okay, so after all the hard parts are shaped, there is one very important cherry to go on top. The rubber seal that keeps the air flowing into the intercooler. Originally, my plan was to repurpose two extra OEM seals I happen to have, and this is how it came out. So yeah, that, that wasn't gonna fly. <laughs> I mean, um, and this is because I overlooked a vital detail. The front and rear heights of this seal are different. This is because the angle of the hood when it's closed. If it were the same height, the seal would get mashed at the top of the intercooler, the part closest to the firewall. Or, it wouldn't seal the bottom, the most forward-facing part. I could have mounted one of the seals backwards and rearranged it, but it probably actually would not have set very well. So I ordered a length of rubber that closely matches the OEM spec. The length I ordered was enough to make two seals. Once I got the rubber, I marked it up and cut it accordingly. To make the holes, I used this electrical pin tool that I did not need, but any thin-walled cylindrical object will cut it pretty easily with a little bit of pressure and twisting. Now this is the splitter with the seal mounted, 
and I use these clips to hold the seal on. These are the same stock clips used to hold the weather strip on the wiper assembly cover. I had some extras when I redid everything. I know I didn't need to put the seam in front, front and center of the splitter, but this is the first version of the part, so I'm more concerned with function and adjustability rather than looks. If I decide to refine the part, I will most likely mend the seam where there will be no overlap and locate in a position that's virtually invisible. By the way, um, the rubber can be formed pretty easily with a heat gun. I played with some scraps and I was able to make a clean 90 degree bend within a minute and that's including cooling time. Anyway, after the seal was mounted to the housing, I put it on the hood. Um, to make installing the part a little easier, I got some longer bolts and reverse mounted the hood scoop, meaning the OEM style bolt turns in a direction going outward or towards the hood scoop. I made it so that it, the bolts turn inward toward the engine. This is so I can hang the splitter on the bolts, then just put the nuts on. Um, this eliminated the need to locate and align the bolt while I was trying to hold and align the housing it can get kind of difficult doing it that way. So um, if you do this with the whole bolt reverse thing, make sure your bolt is no longer than 30 millimeters long because if the bolt is too long, it could hit the intercooler when the hood is closed. And that's pretty much it. Um, when the hood is closed, the seal wraps around the intercooler uh, very well. It's very difficult to get a picture or video of that because you have to like peek through the hood scoop or look through the crack when the hood is being closed. Um, the pick without the seal installed should give you a good idea of how it fits. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like. If you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe and let me know in the comments what you would like to see. And don't forget, if you have a project that you would like to share, film, feel free to contact me. So until the next time, stay tuned and thanks for watching.